Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department of Frostburg State University. Today we're going to talk about delocalized electrons and charges. The structure on the right is the structure of methyl vinyl ketone. Some of the electrons in methyl vinyl ketone structure are delocalized, meaning that they are shared across multiple atoms. This delocalization of electrons in methyl vinyl ketone helps us predict its reactivity that we might not otherwise be able to understand if we didn't know those electrons were delocalized. In this lesson we'll talk about how to figure out if electrons are delocalized and we'll talk about the consequences of that delocalization. Delocalization is a more proper word for the phenomenon resonance is trying to describe. We use resonance structures as an attempt to rationalize the fact that a single Lewis structure or Lewis-like structure for, an, for a molecule might not be sufficient to represent the bonding or the electron distribution within that molecule. Sometimes electron pairs are shared by two or more, or more than two atoms and, and our traditional structure drawing does not easily allow for that. The phenomenon we are trying to represent is delocalization. So for example, here are, the two, here are two of the resonance structures for the acetate anion. And you can see from these two resonance structures that the electrons are being shared between the two oxygen atoms. And specifically, the negative charge is being shared between the two oxygen atoms. And so we can say that the negative charge in the acetate anion is delocalized. It's being shared by two oxygen atoms, which is one more than we would normally expect if we were looking at each and either of those structures individually. Likewise, one of the lone pairs is delocalized. We can see that that lone pair is found on one of the oxygens in the first structure and the other oxygen in the second structure. from a more sophisticated bonding theory uh, that we will learn about, in organ or learn about later when we study conjugated systems, it turns out that not just the one of the lone pairs is delocalized, but the pi bond is delocalized also. For the moment, that's not so important to us. There's direct evidence for the delocalization of the negative charge in the acetate ion, and some of it pertains to the reactivity of the acetate ion that we'll study later. but one thing that we can understand now is that we can do some calculations to determine the distribution of electron density on the acetate anion and generate a map of that electron density. And it would look something like this. On the image that just appeared on the right, areas that are shaded red have large amounts of electron density and areas shaded blue have low amounts of electron density with green and yellow in between being intermediate. From this image, you can see that the two oxygen atoms in the acetate anion look pretty equal in terms of the amount of electron density. Remember, even though we draw dots and lines to try to represent where electrons are, electrons aren't necessarily best described as particles. They are waves and, and, and have shapes called orbitals. And so the electron density map for a molecule it's hard to pin down where a specific electron is, but we can see when electrons are delocalized throughout the molecule. There are some visual clues in the structure of molecules that can help you understand when electrons might be delocalized. These also happen to match up with some of the familiar resonance patterns. For example, the pi bond in allyl cations is delocalized. And that, remember, allyl is a word that refers to something happening at the position neighboring a double bond. Lone pairs in an allyl position are also delocalized throughout the, the allyl system. In this example I've just shown, you can see one lone pair from the oxygen being delocalized and also being shared by the carbon atom at the other end of the allyl system. Also, anions can be delocalized if they are in an allyl position. In fact, the vast majority of delocalized systems are going to be a positive charge, a negative charge, or a lone pair in an allyl position that can be shared through resonance. Basically, if that positive charge 
negative charge or lone pair looks like it's moving about the molecule when you draw resonance structures then those electrons are delocalized. Delocalization can have consequences for the hybridization and geometry of atoms in a molecule. For example, let's consider this amine which has two different resonance structures shown. If we were to assign the hybridization and geometry of the nitrogen atom and the carbon atom which share the delocalized lone pair, we might get different answers depending on whether we have used the, the resonance structure on the left or the resonance structure on the right. For example, if we use the resonance structure on the left, we might think the nitrogen atom is sp3 hybridized trigonal pyramidal geometry. It has three bonds and one lone pair. We might think the carbon is sp2 hybridized trigonal planar geometry because it has three bonds. If we use the structure on the right, we might think the situation is reversed. The nitrogen is sp2 hybridized trigonal planar because it has three bonds and no lone pairs, while the carbon atom looks sp3 trigonal pyramidal because it has three bonds and one lone pair. This could be confusing if you remember that resonance contributors are supposed to be trying to represent the same structure. The nitrogen atom can't be sp3 and sp2 hybridized and it only has one geometry in the true structure of this molecule. So which one is it? If we look at these two structures we can figure out which one it must be. There is a double bond present in both structures and in the structure on the left the double bond is between the two carbon atoms and the structure on the right is between one of the carbon atoms and the nitrogen atom. In order for all of these atoms to be participating in a carbon-carbon pi bond, they all need to have p orbitals. And the only way they can have p orbitals is if they are sp2 hybridized. So even though the atoms with the lone pairs look like they are in looks look like they are sp3 hybridized, that lone pair must be in a p orbital in order to participate in the delocalization across the pi system. Now, because they must be in a p orbital, we can properly assign the hybridization and geometry of those two atoms. Both the nitrogen and the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized with trigonal planar geometry. In general, if you were drawing a resonance structures, if you were drawing resonance structures and attempting to assign hybridization and geometry, if it looks sp3 in one resonance structure and sp2 in another, choose sp2. If it looks sp2 in one structure and sp in another, choose sp. Whichever hybridization is the lowest, so it can make use of the p orbitals for the electrons to be delocalized. Delocalization also has uh, consequences for the electron density of a molecule, which is which we will be representing at the, for the moment with partial charge. We already saw an electron density map of the acetate anion, uh, which showed that the negative charge was shared between two oxygen atoms. In truth, both of those oxygen atoms had partial negative charges. Neither oxygen had the full negative charge. Here's the structure of methyl vinyl ketone, which I introduced you to at the beginning of the video. While methyl vinyl ketone initially does not look like it has any of the resonance patterns which contribute to delocalization, we should at least draw the resonance structures for methyl vinyl ketone to be sure. As we draw the first important or as we draw the next resonance structure for methyl vinyl ketone, which we do by shifting the lone or shifting the pair of electrons in the carbon oxygen pi bond up to becoming a lone pair on oxygen, now we see an allyl cation pattern which is known to be responsible for or known to be able to take or known to contribute to delocalization. So even though methyl vinyl ketone did not appear to be delocalized at first, in fact the electrons in this molecule are delocalized. And on these structures we can see that while one structure doesn't have any formal charges, two structures do. And if there are formal charges on 
one of the resonance contributors, then there must be some kind of buildup of charge on that atom in the true structure of the molecule. We can represent those buildup of charges as partial charges. We use the lower case Greek delta, which in this case means slightly or very small, to represent the partial charges on those atoms. The oxygen atom is partially negatively charged because it has a negative charge in two of the three resonance structures we drew. Two of the carbon atoms, the one that is part of the ketone functional group and one that is at the end of the chain are partially positively charged because each of them has a positive formal charge in one of the resonance contributors. If an atom has a part formal charge in one resonant contributor, that atom has a partial charge of the same sign in the true structure of that molecule. In the case of methyl vinyl ketone, as I told you before, these partial charges help us understand the particular types of reactions that methyl vinyl ketone can undergo. Later on, you're going to study the reactions of carbonyl compounds, like ketones, and learn that they react with things that have negative charges to form new sigma bonds. But methyl vinyl ketone can also do that at the alkene carbon that has a partial positive charge, and that makes it unique amongst ketones. And so we can use the information about these partial charges in a molecule to help understand the outcome of a reaction like the one I've shown here. And don't worry if you don't understand the notation of the arrows on the reaction. That's coming up later when we start talking about reaction mechanisms. But the arrows in a reaction mechanism are attempting to represent the same thing as resonance arrows. And in fact, you can see arrows in this mechanism that look a lot like resonance arrows. Up next, we're going to do uh, a practice we're going to do some practice questions related to delocalization. Thank you for watching.